ornament that we give out to everybody every year a different one different color green um, and and green and white it has the church emblem on it but that's next Sunday Sunday school hour only those who come then will get that and so I'd encourage you to be here be a part of that Revelation chapter 7 let's all stand as we read the word of God this morning Revelation chapter 7 we're going to read verses 9 through 17 this morning Revelation chapter 9, or chapter 7, verse 9. If you have it, give me a good strong amen. amen. Scripture says in verse 9, Oh, a great multitude which no man can number. Let me stop right here and just say this. A lot of people say, man, heaven, there's not going to be a lot of people in heaven. That's not what God said. God says a great what? Multitude. There's going to be a lot more people in heaven than what we realize. Yeah. And he says a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with the white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying, uh, saying Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. One of the elders answered saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And which came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of white in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. Notice this next phrase. And God shall wipe, all, shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. I want to take that one last phrase where it says, God wipes away all tears. I want to talk to you about this topic this morning, the gentle side of God. The gentle side of God. Father, so I read this passage of Scripture just, I think, a couple weeks ago, maybe earlier this week. Lord, how I was thrilled to see something in this verse. I think sometimes we, we see the last, but there's still another part of this verse I think that we, we kind of miss. I'm thankful that you're a God that's willing to wipe all tears from our eyes. I don't know the needs this morning. But I know the needs are great in this great auditorium. Several hundred people are here this morning. God, I want to be a help to them. I can't do that work without you. Would you please bless now, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Would you listen to me carefully? And everyone, please sit up and just listen to the preaching right now. There's coming a day when God's children God at his throne. This is a great day that we're talking to the saved here this morning. I'm talking to those that one day I get to stand before God at his throne. That's not a bad thing if you're saved because if you were in the Sunday school hour, you learned that you're justified in the sight of God. And this will be a wonderful time to stand before our God in this time when we get to stand before him. Get this now. This is a rewarding day. Amen. For those who serve the Lord, God will give us rewards in that day. But then I look at this. This is a day, we get this now, when all sin will be gone. I don't know about you, but sometimes have you ever 
do any of you, don't raise your hand, but do any of you ever struggle with sin? Yeah. Do you ever have that one sin, man, you struggle with it and you just say, man, I, I just can't wait till I can get over this sin. Can I tell you, one day you'll be over that sin when we get to heaven. And boy, thank God, that sin that doth so easily beset us, it'll no longer beset us anymore because we'll be standing in the presence of a holy God there in this place called heaven. That's not all. That'll be, that'll be a day when all heartache. Boy, I think about that, and I think about those who have lost a loved one, and many of you carry that heartache on a regular basis, and you, you miss, and you're concerned, and your heart hurts on the inside. Aren't you glad on that day all heartache will be gone? Aren't you glad on that day there'll be no sorrow? There'll be no death. There'll be no separation. Get this now. There'll be no doctor that you go to to have to prod you. Aren't you glad about that? Hey, I'm just thinking about that day. The glasses will be gone. Somebody say amen. I think of those who are struggling with your eyesight. You'll be able to see once again clearly when we get to that wonderful place called heaven. I think of those who are and have never seen a sunrise or a sunset, they'll get to see the, the blessedness of the Son of God being the light of this wonderful place called heaven. Hey, this is a good day. This is a day that we don't ever have to go to the undertaker because we got the upper taker who will live in his presence forever. Thank God for that day. We'll never have to worry about any kind of disease crippling our body. The wheelchair be gone. You'll be walking on a street of gold. Can I tell you, this is a wonderful day. I think about this day. I get just a little bit excited. I don't know about you because I think about my mama has been in heaven now for 17 years and I, and I, and I sometimes I wonder what does mama see while she's in heaven? You know, when you look at it, when you think that a thousand years with man is as a day with the Lord, I was figuring out my mama has only been in heaven for about, for about four minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen. I think if I died 40 years after my mom, She'll be only in heaven for 15 minutes, Brother Cordes. Yeah. She'll look at me and say, how'd you get here so quickly? <laughs> so quickly. Yeah. You know, heaven's a wonderful, wonderful place. Yeah. And I think about one place called heaven. God says at this throne, when you read the passage of Scripture in verse 17, he says he'll feed them at the throne. Hey, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad, Brother Snooey, you'll never be hungry again? Yeah, God's going to feed you when you get to heaven. Hey, it, it might be better than McDonald's. I think it will be. I know it'll be better than Chick-fil-A. I know that right now. And I know he's not going to have okra in heaven. Somebody help me out with that one right there. I mean, it's going to be a wonderful place, this place called heaven. Oh, man, I look forward to that day. I'm never going to have to eat. You get that? I don't like peas. My wife says, why don't you put some peas? No, don't ruin this thing, and especially okra. I think if you eat okra, I'm not even sure you can go to heaven. But can I tell you, hey, not in heaven. Going to be a wonderful thing when we get to that wonderful place. I look forward to that day. The Bible says he'll feed us. Right. He'll lead us into fountains of water. You know what that means? I'll never be thirsty. Man, sometimes in this auditorium, when I start the service, I get a little thirsty, and, and some of the ladies back here, they make sure I have water, and I get, my, I get my whistle wet so my throat's not so dry. But when I get to heaven, I'm never going to be parched. I'm never going to be thirsty because I'm living in the place where living waters is. And God said he'll lead me to the one who's living water. Who's that? Jesus Christ. Amen. That's heaven. Amen. Then there's one thing that I saw that really thrilled my soul. And God shall wipe away all tears Amen. from their eyes. Tears are a real thing. Yeah. Some of you went to sleep this week, tears rolling down your eyes right? because of heartache, oh, right. sorrow, loneliness. God step off his throne. 
come over to his children and he himself will wipe the tears from their eyes. The tears we weep because of our loved ones who are going through pain in times that God will say, let me come and wipe the tears from your eyes. Those days that we look at life and the heartache that life brings and God says, on that day, he says, I'll come and wipe the tears from your eyes. I know there's some who've never gone through heartache yet. You don't understand, but those who've been through heartache, you understand the tears. There's mamas and daddies here right now in this group, in this auditorium, that have had the tears of wondering, where's my child? Or maybe a child has broke their heart and you've never had those tears. And boy, the, se- the tears of separation, the tears of regret, the tears of heartache because a child has broke your heart and that tear will never be there one day when we get to heaven. I look forward to that day. This is, not, and by the way, God, but this wiping away of the tears, it's not temporary. It's a permanent wiping away. God says, God, there'll be no more tears when we get to heaven. God wipes them away. Right, amen. Yep. This is not the promise of Pastor Domley. This is the promise of God himself. God says, I'm the one that'll come down and I'll wipe away the tears. But this is what grabbed my attention. Notice what it says. Verse 17, look at it. He says, for the, for the lamb. Hold on. Let me stop right here. So the lamb is the one who's going to do this. He says, for the lamb. He says, it will feed them. He talks about leading them. And he says, in God. Now this God, that word God there is talking about deity. Who's the deity? Jesus Christ. Who's Jesus Christ? The lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. God says, he says, the side of God. Get this now. The side of God that will come and wipe all tears from our eyes is the lamb of God. I thought about that. And I thought to myself, that's the gentle side of God. God. You know, when you think of a lamb, a lamb is not mean. A lamb is very gentle. A lamb is easy to be now God did not say for the lion or the tribe of Judah will come and wipe the tears from your eyes he said the lamb will come and wipe the tears from your eyes God could have said I'm going to let the lion come the lion, the side, the part of the side of God that's that lion the tribe of Judah but God says no he says I'm going to let that side of God that lamb that gentle side of God come and wipe the tears from your eyes and God could have said he could have used the side of him that says the mighty God the mighty God of Isaiah 9 6 he did not say the delivering God um, of, of Romans eleven twenty six. He did not say the creator of Genesis 1, 1 or the mediator of First Timothy 2 the cornerstone of Ephesians 2.20 or the prince of peace in Isaiah 9.6 or the rock of Deuteronomy 32.4 or the king of kings of Revelation 19.16 or the potentate of 1 Timothy 6.15 or the author and finisher of our faith of Hebrews 12.2 or the carpenter of Matthew 6.3 or the head of the church of Colossians 1.18. God says the lamb side, that side of God, the lamb, the gentle side will come and wipe the tears from your eyes. I thought about that. I thought, my big God, who makes the sun to God will say, I'll I'll leave my control of, of nature and I'll come and I'll wipe your tears from your eyes. That God that judges the wicked for their sin, that judging God says the gentle side is the lamb that will come and wipe the tears. I think of Brother Obabisa, his dad passed away just about a couple months ago. He didn't get to go back to Africa to, to his daddy's funeral. Had to just watch it via internet. But you know what? Aren't you glad that in a place called heaven, you get to see your daddy again. 
And aren't you glad on that kind of a day that God, that gentle side of God, the lamb that taketh away the sin of the world, the lamb, that was a sacrificial lamb for our sins. Hey, he leaves the throne and he comes and wipes the tears from our eyes. He did not, God could have said, I want to let the rock, the solid rock, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean on Jesus' name. Hey, on Christ the solid rock I stand. He did not say the solid rock would come and wipe the tears. He said that gentle side of God, that little the one who died for you and I, who was led as a, as a sheep before the slaughter. He says, I'm the one who will come. I'll wipe the tears from your eyes. Yeah, yeah. What kind of tears? Tears of death? Tears of sorrow? Tears of pain? Tears of heartache? Amen. I look across this auditorium and I see people, some of you, you got pain in your body and you can't. Sometimes the tears just run. Sometimes those tears run down the face. You wonder, man, I, are those tears ever going to stop? Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you feel the pain of the tears that just grip your heart. And you wonder, I wonder if that pain will ever stop. And I've got news for you. I do know one thing, that one day those tears will stop. I know one day we'll stand before an almighty God. But he says, but hold on. He says, I want you to see the side. I want you to see the lamb, the one who will leave the throne and come and wipe the tears from the eyes. Amen. But hold on. I've said all that to come to this. The God that one day will wipe all tears from our eyes is still the same God that cares enough for you today in your problems Amen. to wipe the tears. Yeah. Right. Amen. You carry heartache today. One day that God, what's that mean? That means he's the one who gives us comfort. Right. The lamb, the one who gives us comfort in our heartache and in our sorrow. Hey, he comes and wipes the tears from our eyes. As you sit and you, you sit in the front row and the casket's at the front and you see a loved one laying in that casket and those tears roll down your face. And I love that God's given us a Holy Spirit who lives on the inside and that Holy Spirit gives you the comfort and somehow he comes and I think God comes and wipes that tears from our eyes and I think about that God that says I, I'm, the, I'm strong enough to make the sun to rise. I'm strong enough to make the Tetons. I'm strong enough to make the Redwoods. I'm strong enough. I'm strong enough to knock down the walls of Jericho. I'm strong enough to part the Red Sea. I'm strong enough to conquer a Goliath. I'm strong enough to do anything that needs to be done. But God says, but I'm gentle enough and I'm tender enough yes, that when you're going through tough times, he says that same power that can do anything also is the power to comfort. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's good. The tears that roll. Heartache. God knows your heartache. Sometimes you don't know how to explain it to anybody, do you? You try. The best you know how, you try to tell somebody, hoping they can somehow understand. But I know the one who does understand. Mrs. Gonzalez, I know the one who understands the back pain that you carry. I don't understand it, but God does. 
And that God, that mighty God who, hit, who made the sun to rise this morning, that gave us a chill of air and, gives us, and gave us food to eat, that God who has kept everything in its orbit, that God who has allowed fall to come and the trees to go in hibernation for a winter time, and that God that keeps everything in its place. Oh, I'm thankful. He knows my heartache this morning. Amen. What you feel on the inside, he knows as a grandparent tries to raise their grandchild and you're frustrated and you're irritated on the inside and you, you say and you say to yourself, I'm too old for this. I can't take this anymore. But I'm thankful there's a God in heaven that he knows what you're going through. And I'm thankful there's a God in heaven that nobody else knows the heartache. And you could try to explain it to anybody else, but I'm thankful I serve a God that is strong enough to care for every problem, but he's tender enough to come that when the tears are there, he can wipe the tears from my eyes. God knows your heartache. I wrote this down. God cares. I hear about the heartaches of our church and I do the best. Sometimes I wish I could care better. I don't know how to do it. I don't know what you need. I look at Brother Williams and his wife, and I wish I could be a better pastor. I could care better. I don't know how to care better. But I know a God who does. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And he cares for you. And he loves you in these days. That God that we pray and say, God, could you show your mighty hand? Could you heal? God, could you show your power one more time and just heal? God, my God is gentle enough that when we cry in the prayers, when the tears are rolling down the face, when the concern of an ambulance picking up a loved one comes and the tears are rolling, I'm glad that I'm not going through that alone. I'm glad that right next to me is a God in heaven who says, I'm with you. He says, I'm powerful enough to care for it, but he says, I'm also powerful enough to be tender. Amen. Yeah. Amen. To wipe all tears. Amen. Yes, sir. From your eyes. Christian. Run to God. Stop running to social media. It'll, it does nothing for you. Run to God. Stop running to vice. Right. Yes. Run to God. Yes. Stop as you go through the heartache of life and you say, I don't know that anyone quite understands what I'm going through. Oh, you can run to God and know one thing about God. God absolutely understands everything. those who struggle with heartache maybe you live on a street maybe you sleep under a bridge at night time and you're cold at night he said does anyone understand I'm telling you right now God understands those who come from the CP unit can I tell you God understands you sit there and you're worried about your family we hear your prayer request can I tell you God loves you and God cares for your needs right now and I'm thankful that God doesn't say well I'll care for this side but not this side I'm thankful that whether I'm red yellow black or white or brown or whatever color I am God doesn't look at the color of the skin because I love you enough to care for you Amen. Amen. So run to him. When you go to the doctor and say, doctor, what's wrong? And the doctor gives, says, I, I, we don't know how to, we don't know how to care for this problem. This is beyond what man can give you an answer for. And you sit there with question. You say, I, I thought that's why I go to a doctor. I thought the doctor would know. I can tell you, you can run to God. And you can go to an almighty God. And I don't know why you won't reach down, but I trust you. But one thing I know, you care enough for me. 
that you give me the comfort I need as I go through this. What a great God. I go through my prayer time throughout the week. I think of different people in our church and I carrying heartache. And I pray for them by name and I say, God, I don't know. I wish I could somehow care for them better. I, I wish I, I wish. to the family but you just don't know what to say I'm glad that God knows what to say and I'm glad that God knows how to be there and I'm glad that God knows how to wipe the tears one day he'll leave the lamb will leave his throne the gentle side of God will leave the throne and that gentle side of God will one day wipe those tears from our eyes that the tears will no longer roll again but until then let the gentle side of God run to the lamb run to the lamb and say here's my heartache here's my sorrow here's my pain hey the Bible tells us our sorrows. Why? So that he can be the one that gives us that comfort in that time of need. I'm saying, hey, run to the lamb and let the lamb care for your needs and let him help you in your time of heartache. Don't stay home and sulk at home on Sunday night. Come to church and let the lamb help you in the preaching time in church. Go to the lamb. Run to the lamb. And as you sit here this morning in this great auditorium, you say, I don't think anyone knows. I don't think anyone understands the load I'm carrying. But I'm thankful. God knows. God cares. And the gentle side of God says, you know what? I'll even come and wipe the tears from your eyes. And as you carry that heartache, there's a God that loves you enough to come and put his arm around you and say, let me wipe the tears. Men, have you ever hugged your wife when she was crying? You, You held her in your arms and you just kind of took your finger and wiped it. I don't think God's going to use a hanky like this. I think God is going to come, put his arm around us. Come here a second. My son-in-law. I should should be wiping my own tears. God will put his arm around us. Say, it's okay, son. Mm. Let Let me wipe those tears. Yeah. Amen. Away. Sometimes my heart, thank you, gets heavy for our people. Because I know the heartache that you're carrying. I know a little just a little bit about it. I don't quite understand the whole thing, but I know a little bit about it. And sometimes I just wonder, I say, God, could you just put your arm around them and wipe the tear? Amen. Let them know that you're near them, that you understand. Help the widow lady. Help the widow man. Help the child who's at home and hearing mom and dad fight and squabble and wondering if they're going to make it and you're at home and home is like a war zone and you stay, sit there in your house and you say, does anyone care? Right. I tell you, child, listen to me. God cares. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And if you'll just run to God and say, God, I need your help. He'll come and put his gentle arm around you. The comfort that you need. But hold on. It's the lamb. The lamb. Hold on. That means that lamb needs to be the one that's paid for your sins. Because if the lamb has not paid for your sins, then the lamb will not come and wipe the tears. Why? That lamb of God paid.
paid for your sins so that you could go to heaven. But he did more than that. He paid for your sins so he could be the one to come as God, as deity, to put his arm around you, the gentle side of God. And so let me wipe the tears from your eyes. Come to God. Trust God. Let him be your savior. Some of you this morning in just a minute or so, when we give the invitation, you ought to leave your seat, go to the nearest aisle wherever you are. If you're in the balcony, you ought to leave your, your seat in the balcony, come down to this altar. You're carrying a heartache. Kneel down at this altar and, and just give it to God. And say, God, I don't understand everything, but could you help me? And I think what you'll find is the tender embrace of God will come and comfort you. If you're here this morning, you're not saved. Would you leave your seat and go to the nearest aisle and come to the front? And assistant pastors and say, I want to meet that lamb that is powerful enough to create a world, but is tender enough to wipe a tear. Father, what a great God. I preach this not because I don't understand it. I preach this because I do understand and I try to explain it the best I know how, but I know what that tender embrace is like, and I know what it's like when your word, you use the finger of your word to wipe the tears and give us the confidence and joy that everything's going to be okay. I look at our church this morning, many are...